Hey everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am creating a new journal that is specific to this particular time of the year, which is the end of summer. It's the time when summer and autumn sort of converge into this beautiful golden blurry series of days and I just love it. It's my favorite part of summer and to celebrate this time of the year I decided to create a summer's end digital kit and I actually created two. The first one is a junk journal kit which I am assembling here in this video and the second is an a vintage digital collection ephemera kit that can be used with this journal kit or on its own just to document these ending days of summer. So I decided to create this journal, like I said, because it commemorates the most favorite part of summer for me. And I kind of gravitated towards neutral, creamy hues, and I tried to source vintage flower photos that were indicative of the season and I also included lots of vintage images and poems that speak to this particular time of the year. I used a cover photo that is a painting, one of my favorite artists, Winslow Homer. He is an American realist uh, from the late 1800s and this is a painting that is called the bean picker and I absolutely love it. It just reminds me so much of this point in time because I'm currently harvesting my beans as well and I just love the bonnet of this little girl and I paired it with a piece of vintage wallpaper that is indicative of sort of a wind-filled prairie. The flowers just seem very dainty and something you would find around this time of year in a prairie. So I am going to be using those pictures on the cover and the back cover, and I printed those out on some premium matte photo paper. And right now I'm assembling the inside. So the inside comes with six signatures, and I am pairing it with a couple pieces of scrapbook paper. I really like to mix sort of that more modern scrapbook paper with these older vintage papers. It's just a look that I've come to really, really like. So I am trimming down the size of these pieces of paper and I'm going to include them in my signatures. The signatures that I printed out that are above and to the left, I printed those out on some cotton linen paper uh, to give it more of a textured, sort of softer feel. And I'm gonna back them with some coffee dyed paper. So I like to start off with a sort of a blank journal and so incorporating the flip side of all of these signatures with just some coffee dyed regular copy paper is the way that I like to incorporate that and so some of these scrapbook papers are double-sided but for those that aren't I'm going to glue additional signatures from this kit to the back side of them and then I'm just going to arrange them how I like so I, I created the cover using just regular cardstock it was just a piece of coffee dyed cardstock that I am going to glue that painting on the front and then that vintage wallpaper on the back and I'm just gonna trim it down
Once I get all of my signatures lined and trimmed, I place them inside of what is going to be the cover just to make sure that they're tall enough or not too tall and that the width is okay. And if I find that there are some excess pieces that are hanging over the top or the edge, I'm just gonna take my paper trimmer and give them a little bit of a trim. At this point, I have decided to line the inside front and back cover with a piece of fabric that I purchased from Hobby Lobby a couple months ago. This was just a piece of fabric. I got a couple yards of it. It was on sale or I think, actually believe it was clearance. It was a very, very, very low price. And I loved the neutral floral combined with the front and back signature page. I just thought that it really went well with it and it really added to the theme. Now you can line the inside of yours with anything or you can just leave it coffee dyed. I did go back and forth. I was going to maybe leave the inside back cover the way it was because I had a really nice coffee stain on that back cover, but I decided to cover it with that piece of fabric which is right here so I cut it to size leaving a little bit of an overhang on, around the edges and I end up ironing it and then I just glue it down with some fabric tech glue and then I take my scissors and trim around the edges and I also do a little bit of ripping while I'm trimming too because I really liked that frayed edge on the perimeter of the inside cover Now I'm getting ready to actually assemble my front and back cover. And so I printed out this picture a little bit smaller than the vintage wallpaper. You can see the vintage wallpaper is a little bit higher. And I believe I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but I did print this out on some matte photo paper because I wanted a really rich, deep color. And so that's exactly what I got. And I decided to line the underneath of that front photo with some of this tissue paper that I had just put aside into my stash and I really like the color of it. It goes well with all these earthy tones and it really matches like the floor of that vegetable garden that she's standing on and so I just kind of rip and cut some pieces of it and I end up just gluing it underneath that picture. Now I'm trying to decide what sort of texture piece I want to go along on the outside cover and I decide to just line the spine with a piece of neutral vintage fabric so I have a whole bunch of these fabric strips that I purchased from an estate sale it, this woman was some sort of a, a wool or texture artist and she used a lot of fabrics and there was a lot of fabric that was rolled up into balls very very old fabric and this is one of the strips and it's a floral and it's a very neutral and I end up just gluing it on the spine and I cover the sewing of the signatures with that as well
I page through my signatures one last time and then I just proceed with my normal way that I sew a pamphlet stitch journal, soft cover journal. I just paper clip the edges and then I measure and I use an awl to poke some holes and I just sew using some twine and a big tapestry needle and I tie it all together. For this one, I actually hid the sewing on the inside page, meaning I didn't just tie it into a knot on the inside page. I actually uh, re-threaded my needle and pulled it through to the outer side since I knew that that was gonna be covered, and I tied my knot there. And then that obviously was covered with the pictures on the cover and the back cover, as well as that fabric on the spine. I do have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to sew these signatures and I kind of slow down and I take you step by step and I'll link that video down below in case you are interested. Once I finish, I give it a quick flip through and now I'm ready to glue my cover photo and my back cover vintage wallpaper onto this area. And so you can see I'm overlapping and here's my piece of fabric that I'm going to add and I'm really adding a lot of those frayed edges because I really like the way that looks. And so once again, I just use some fabric tech glue and I glue all three of these pieces down and as I noted earlier, I cover that sewing on the spine right up with these items.
Once I get all of that glue down, I go around the edges with some Distress ink and I'm kind of ripping and crumbling as I'm going around to give it more of a distressed look. And I decide that I want another sort of textural piece added to this just to kind of pull it all together. And I settle on a piece of old trim and I add it to the bottom portion of this journal and I really like the way it kind of grounds it. I have a tendency of adding some sort of piece of textural element to the bottom of journals. I just really like that it gives like a definitive edge and it almost is like always the ending piece that kind of pulls everything together. So once I get that trimmed and glued down, then I am going to add one final touch to this cover, and that is from the Summer's End Ephemera Digital Kit, which uh, I will also link down below. And that is just a little saying that says the edge of autumn, because that's what this photo really reminds me of, is really the edge of autumn. Not quite autumn, but just right on the edge of autumn. That's going to wrap up today's video. I'll link those new kits down below as well as that how-to video on how to sew a soft cover journal. As always, thanks so much for supporting my YouTube channel and my Etsy store. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time.